are grateful for them. And what a wonderful way to begin this gathering here this evening. Welcome, and on behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we welcome you to the 26th Annual Crystal Apple Awards. We are honored that you are here this evening and excited to celebrate and recognize the outstanding teachers that will receive Crystal Apples this evening. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. My name is Greg Toulson, a counselor in the Del Mar State Presidency. Seated here on the stand is President Dave Clark, President of the Del Mar State, and to his left is Mark Morley, also a counselor in the Del Mar State Presidency. As a state presidency, we oversee and work with and help 10 different congregations that roughly cover the same area as the San Diego Union High School District. We'd like to thank Megan McBee and her accompanist, Vicki Bradford, and the youth choir for the music that they've provided for us so far and that will provide for us throughout this evening. I particularly and especially want to thank uh, Joan Nichols and her assistant, Lisa Belisario, who had the responsibility for organizing and planning this Crystal Apple event. We are grateful for their devoted service to such a worthwhile endeavor. They have given countless selfless hours to make this evening possible. We also want to thank and recognize members of the Public Affairs Council who have worked closely with Joan and Lisa to make this event possible. We want to recognize them and invite Joan to stand, Lisa to stand, members of the We'll begin our program this evening with an invocation by Dallin Wiebeck from Costa Canyon High School. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could gather here today in recognition of all the wonderful teachers of our high school, of our school district, and we thank you for all the amazing teachers who, uh, who teach us and help us learn, and we ask thee that we will bless them and as they continue to teach, and please bless that we will have an enjoyable night tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Thank you, John, for that invocation. It's our pleasure this evening to celebrate the, tw the 26th anniversary of the Crystal Apple Awards. These awards have been presented since 1994 to outstanding teachers in the San Diego and Rancho Santa Fe Unified School Districts. Last year, we started including the San Marcos High School because many of our students attend San Marcos High. And it's our pleasure this year to include for the first time private schools attended by students that are members of our congregations. Uh, teachers are nominated by middle school and high school students that are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Our young men and young women take very seriously this no nomination process. They write detailed nominations for the teachers describing what classroom events and personal characteristics led this particular teacher having a positive and lasting impact on them. Our youth describe how these teachers go above and beyond their normal duties by exhibiting Christ-like characteristics and motivating the students to be better people. The rigorous balloting process leads to hundreds of nominations that we review, and we consider nominations from previous years as well. I sit on the committee that reviews those nominations, and it's amazing to read the comments by each of these students about these teachers that they admire and respect so much. We love and appreciate our teachers who do so much for all of the youth throughout the district. And this evening is a small way to express our appreciation to these amazing teachers. To express our gratitude um, for our amazing teachers is one of the primary purposes we hold these Crystal Apple events. The story is told of a group of men who are sitting around talking about people that uh, had an impression on them, they made a difference in their lives. One man thought of a high school teacher that had introduced him to Tennyson, and he decided to write that teacher and thank her. 
In time written in a feeble scrawl came the teacher's reply. This was that teacher's reply. It said, my dear Willie, I can't tell you how much your note meant to me. I'm in my 80s, living alone in a small room, cooking my own meals, lonely and like the last leaf lingering behind. You will be interested to know that I taught school for 50 years, and yours is the first note of appreciation I have ever received. It cheered me as nothing has in years. We don't want any of our teachers, especially the amazing teachers here tonight, to go another day or even a year to know how much we appreciate and express our gratitude to you. So thank you for being here. Of course, we welcome our winners, their family members, and guests. We'll introduce them individually later in the program. We'd like to acknowledge the attendance of the following and invite them to stand as their name is called. The president of the San Diego Union School Board, Beth Kirby Scheimer. Rancho Santa Fe board member, G. Tengani. Rancho Santa Fe School District Superintendent, Donna Trippi. San Diego Union High School District Superintendent, Robert Haley. We also have a few principals and assistant principals here this evening. We'd like to recognize them, invite them to stay in their name is called Reno Medina from La Costa okay. High School. Brent Kilby, Candy Preston County. Robert Cobo, Tori Pines High School. Marianne Newskin, Pacific Trails Middle School. <laughs> Justin Pond, Earl Warren Middle School. <laughs> Kara Dolnick from the Gaino Middle School. <laughs> Garrett Cordwan, our Roger Bow. and Marisa Fulman from Soul Charter School. I met Marisa earlier today, this evening, learned about Soul Charter School. Thank you for being here, Marisa. That was very exciting what you're doing there at Soul. Many of our special guests have attended and previous uh, Crystal Apple Awards and I'm grateful for their continued support and attendance here tonight. These schools have received numerous awards, including National Blue, Blue Ribbon, New American High School Award, the California Distinguished School Award, to name just a few. The GreatSchools.org rating for most of our high schools scored 10 out of 10 based on test scores and college readiness. Our students have received numerous awards and earned national recognition for their work in math, science, language arts, visual and performing arts, as well as boasting some of San Diego County's strong athletic programs. Thanks to such fine schools, our students excel, consistently achieving at the highest level, launching them to some of the best universities and finest careers. We love our schools. We will now have a special musical number by Marielle Alexander and Rena Darian with uh, uh, Oliver Durkheim on the guitar. Marielle is a student at Tory Pines. Darian is a student at also Tory Pines. I got that right, didn't I, Darian? Darian is a student at Tory Pines. <laughs> Nobody. I'm ready to ask you. Oh, she's graduated. That's right, we recruited her. <laughs> she was a substitute that somebody couldn't, because somebody couldn't make it the last minute. Sorry about that, Ray. She was an outstanding student, too. <laughs> Yeah. 
He may be aware that most of the students who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints attend the seminary in the mornings before school. One of my teachers at LCC recently asked for all the Mormon kids to please raise their hand. Although there were, although there were some other Mormon kids in the class, some of them who decided not to raise their hand, my teacher looked at me and asked, did you attend seminary this morning? I responded that yes, I had been in seminary this morning. He then asked me what I had learned in seminary that day. I was too shocked or embarrassed in front of my class to give him a good answer, so I just kind of shrugged my shoulders at him and hoped that he wouldn't ask me any more questions. <laughs> there are a lot of things I would want people to know about what we are learning in seminary. While studying the Bible and the Book of Mormon, we also learn a lot about U.S. history and world history. Most importantly, in seminary, we learn to be kind and to serve others. We learn in the Book of Mormon that when we are serving others, we are serving God. Many of you might be familiar with the massive numbers of volunteers in the Large Welfare Program in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A recent article printed in the World Religion News states that in one year, the Church responded to 177 emergency situations in 56 countries. The article also states that the church spent over $1.2 billion on welfare and humanitarian efforts. This is only possible because of something that is very important to our church. That is, no one gets paid. President Clark, President Tolson, and President Morley, who spend as much time as a full-time job to lead our state, take nothing from the church for themselves. Sunday school teachers, choir instructors, activity advisors, camp counselors, Sister Nichols, who worked so hard to organize this event for us, and so many more like her. Yes, even seminary teachers are all volunteers. This is why we are able to give so much, because every penny of every dollar donated to this church goes to help those in need and to bless the lives of others. This is how I think of my teachers. I think of all of you teachers in the same way I think of my church leaders. Both of my grandpas worked for the school district. One was a teacher and one was an administrator. They are both so loving and caring. I know that to you, being a teacher is much more than just having a job. I know how much you do and how much you care about your students. I want you to know that you are changing lives. You are helping us to be better. When I moved to San Diego from Las Vegas three years ago, I was scared to go to a new school. I didn't know anyone and I was afraid of having no friends. So many wonderful teachers and administrators helped me and my sister to feel wanted and comfortable at our new school. I can tell that you love your students. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for loving us. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, we have a great job. And our thanks to Marielle and Raina and Oliver for that beautiful musical number, especially for Raina on short notice. We really appreciate them. Well, we proceed now with the presentation of the awards. It's our pleasure to have with us this evening Melba Coleman, Kelly Lessie, two people that have been intimately involved with the Crystal Apple Awards for many years. Melba was the director of our Public Affairs Council 26 years ago when this program was first started, when there were only just a few schools involved. She has been a great supporter of the program ever since, and the event has grown to include many, many schools. Kelly was also part of the Crystal Apple Award since the beginning, and uh, she continued to serve tirelessly and um, as an aid to the organization of this program, becoming the chairman and serving that position for 20 plus years before she passed the short torch to our new chairman, Joe Nichols, just about a year ago. So we are grateful for these two good women, and we will now turn the time to Melba for the presentation of the first few awards. We invite the recipients to approach the podium on this side, my right, and exit on the left, just a little bit of traffic control, I make it easy. All the opposite. <laughs> now that I thoroughly confused you, does it matter? I guess it does. <laughs> Joan is the boss, we're gonna go. We're gonna enter right here, my left, your right. You're gonna exit right here. And Joan will make sure you do that right. <laughs> 
Please come to the podium. Thank you, everyone. As an active participant in the Crystal Apples program um, from earlier times, it's gratifying to see how this event has grown and flourished. Now tonight, most of us are meeting for the very first time, but I suspect that we all have something, at least one something in common. We can all remember our favorite teachers. Think about it. Is the name coming to mind? Yes. Mine was Miss Clark. She taught algebra. And as you can tell from my hair, I lived in a time when girls were not expected to learn math. But Miss Clark was very strict, and she gave me a true appreciation for the value of numbers. Well, we have a lot of people to award tonight, and so let's get started. First, we'd like to invite uh, San Diego Union High School Board President Beth, uh, Beth Her Hergesheimer to help us present the first set of crystal apples. And then, and then she'll uh, offer some brief remarks afterwards. This year's winner from Carmel Valley Middle School is social studies teacher, Jason Dickinson. Jason, could you join us on the stand? Jason was born and raised in San Diego and attended Claremont High School. He has been teaching at Carmel Valley Middle School for 14 years. Following our um, summations of the various comments that students have made, so if, sometimes if there's a little repetition, you'll know that that's a different student's comment, but even though it may say the same thing. Mr. Dickinson's students say, he said he has uh, nicknames for all of us, and it makes us feel special and individual. He talks to us like he wants us to be there, and it always makes us laugh. Every time someone gets called by their nickname, it makes them smile. He makes everyone feel great about themselves, too. He has encouraged me to let people know more often how great they are. Once I felt bad about myself during class, and after class, he talked to me and reminded me how great I am. Jason? Thank you very much. Uh, first, I just want to say over the years, I've had many students uh, from uh, the church, and I just want to say I feel like we should be giving you the award because so, some of them are so fantastic and such great kids. Um, I started teaching on my 24th birthday, uh, my first day of work. I showed up uh, with uh, a bag of red pens and a dream. And uh, I've been teaching only middle school ever since, uh, which when I tell people that oftentimes, I, there's a look of sympathy and a wonder if I'm contagious or not. But uh, I can tell you it's, it's a lot better than it sounds. It's actually a fantastic career. And I'm very happy to have been doing this for so long. I often tell kids that uh, Life is a multiple choice test, and every choice you make goes toward uh, the final goal. And on days like this, I feel like I made the right choice. So thank you very much for this. The winner from Degano Middle School is science teacher Sasha Boyd. Sasha? Science, STEM, and surfing. His students say, Mr. Boyd is peaceful, patient, and kind. When kids do the wrong thing or ignore him, he never raises his voice. We start every day with deep breaths and a joke. 
Then he counsels with us to see what we want to do. He always asks us if we are stressed, and he changes the schedule to make sure we aren't. Mr. Voigt is an extremely good teacher who always takes time to solve and recognize what students need and is always willing to change up our schedule for the day to meet the needs of each student individually. He strives daily to make sure that everyone in his class is loved, included, and has friends that make them feel welcome. Mr. Voigt shows extraordinary patience. For example, when there are a few misbehaving kids in class in the most calm way, he simply asks them to go to a separate room with him to talk. <laughs> Instead of yelling at them or immediately punishing them, he talks to them. He talks to them about their mistakes and how they can do better next time. It speaks volumes about the kind of person he is. He's a great example to me and has very Christ-like aspects to him that I greatly appreciate. Thank you, 
so much. So I don't know if you all saw it as you came in this evening, but there was a, a table with a display of our current awardees, but also the awardees from those campuses throughout the years. And I just, I think it's such an impressive overview that demonstrates the caring capacity um, of the teachers in this, the schools across this district and across the years. And uh, those that are being honored here tonight are much loved and admired as teachers and as mentors because they themselves love their students. And I think we're hearing that they love their jobs, they love their students, and they love uh, instructing and serving each of the young people that comes into their lives. I'm always touched when I come to this event to um, by the wisdom and the words that we hear from the young people that are, are nominating these folks. And I've said it before, it is these young uh, students that give me hope for the future. And I'm also always very honored, and I think I can speak on behalf of, of um, all the different schools and, uh, that are participating, even uh, those beyond the walls of our district, but that we're honored that you as a community entrust your students to us, um, you know, and, and just our thanks to you uh, and still our state of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for taking the time and making the effort year after year to uh, maintain this wonderful tradition. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to uh, extend a personal congratulations and uh, job well done to all the honorees that are here this evening. So thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Now we would like to invite Superintendent uh, Donna Trippi of the Rancho Santa Fe School District to help us present the next set of Crystal Apple Awards and share a few words afterwards. Middle School is history teacher Jeff Westermeyer. Jeff, would you join us on the stage? <laughs> Jeff has taught at both Oakcrest Middle School for his entire 28-year teaching career. He has taught U.S. history and intro to multimedia classes. His students say, this teacher is not only funny, but he is strict. <laughs> I was slacking and forgot to print out an assignment that was worth 80 points. I didn't get full credit, but I could make up more points in other ways. He taught me that preparedness is needed. He taught me, similarly, that I can't borrow oil from my land. I have to depend on myself. He also taught me that I must keep trying and persevere. Jeff.
taught at Oak Crest Middle School and Canyon Crest Academy. Her students say, Ms. Lenahan takes in the needs of her students. On the first week of school, she asked us if we had anything we wanted her to know about us that could help us. I told her that sitting in the front of the class helps me to focus, and she let me do that. She asks if anyone needs help printing, and she helps us with that. She also makes us feel excited about class. We have large class sizes, and Ms. Lenahan pays attention to everyone despite that. Just like Christ pays attention to all of us, and if one sheep goes missing, he finds us. Ms. Lenahan gives us that same feeling. One time, I had a lot of papers due for her that I needed to turn in. She was very kind and understanding and gave me two extra days to redo them. There was once a student in another classroom who needed help with getting some things started. Ms. Lenahan didn't hesitate to help her and made sure she was all set. It took her an hour to do so. She is Christ-like because she forgives and forgets. And I know this is weird, but my friend and I give her gum in exchange for Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> and actually Jeff Westermeyer was my master teacher, so I hope have learned from the best. Um, and then I did go to Oak Crest, and I actually received this award at Oak Crest, I did go to Canyon Crest, I received this award at Oak Crest when I very first started. And now, almost two decades later, I'm receiving it again, so it's an award that students honor us. And so I feel like it, Teacher of the Year, Teachers recognize teachers, but this award to me is even more special because it comes from the, the client that we teach. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. The winner from our Roger Rose School is computer science teacher Jackie Mendez. Jackie Mendez. Jackie has been teaching computer education at Rancho Santa Fe School for 26 years. She has also directed and coached the girls and boys volley program, volleyball program. Her students say, Ms. Mendez goes beyond the mark in encouraging her students to be the very best. She has been a volleyball coach for about 20 years at Rancho Santa Fe and has organized so many tournaments and spent so much time making things special for the girls. She makes things fun. And on trips, she has us do skits. <laughs> and we get to make fun of her in the skits. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> Ms. Mendez has dedicated her life to helping her kids become the best they can. She gave me confidence in volleyball and gave me leadership opportunities on the team, which really helped me to grow. It's the first time that a lot of middle schoolers learn how to be responsible and learn rotations. Ms. Mendez requires a lot of us, which really prepares us for high school and for our futures. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the congregation for this amazing award. Um, I guess I'm going to be the emotional one, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, um, it's been quite a journey. Uh, I have been teaching, like I said, I was a coach first, then I became a teacher. And I think the one thing that motivated and inspired me the most every year, how did you get out there and do it? How did you go back to teaching and coaching? And I would say, you know what? At the end of each day, I got to leave my classroom, 
walk to the gym, and slam volleyballs at little children. <laughs> Um, to make a big impact on these kids' lives. And I have thoroughly enjoyed that and thoroughly enjoyed um, going to the journey with the Burnett family, where I've taught all five of their um, kids and coached them. Um, funny story is, is that Ava came to the gym um, one day when Cozy was an eighth grader, and Rebecca said, can she play morning volleyball with you? And I said, Rebecca, how old is she? She said, five, take her. <laughs> and um, she's been with and she's graduating this year. Ava, thank you. And um, thanks again for all the representatives of my school and all of you. Thank you very much. We will now hear from Superintendent uh, Donna Trippi. And following her remarks, Kelly Lessie, my friend and partner in a lot of Crystal Apples uh, events, will take the podium. Okay, it's my first time at this event, and I can't get over what a beautiful venue this is to really celebrate some inspirational teachers. Um, I have been the superintendent in Rancho Santa Fe since January 2nd. So that's four months, two weeks, three days, four hours, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> but it's been a journey. I loved every minute of it. It's a wonderful district with incredible teachers, inspirational teachers, a very committed board of trustees, wonderful administrators, and of course, unbelievable children. So I have been really blessed to be there. Prior to that, I was the um, principal, very proud principal of Lowell Elementary for 19 and a half years, part of San Diego Unified. So I went from 200 schools to two schools. So it's a wonderful small district and I'm really enjoying every minute of being there. So and I thank you um, just for honoring teachers. I hope that our teachers feel that they're loved and appreciated every day for the work that they do because teaching to them is not a profession, it's a calling and they really should know how much we appreciate what they do. It's the most important job in the world and this recognition and just is, is really a blessing for them to really totally um, to give them another opportunity to be recognized. So thank you for doing this. Many years ago, a past recipient revealed to me that he had spent the week prior to the awards ceremony contemplating quitting teaching but decided to continue as a, as a result of his award. That's very touching to me because the winners tonight, you show me how much you love your job and you love your students. You love to teach. You live to teach and you don't teach to live. You create an environment of enthusiasm, of learning, appreciation for growing, and room for making mistakes along the way. You lead by example, and I thank you. We'd now like to invite G. Men Mangani. Did I say that right? Okay, good. We'd like to have you come to the podium.
He's willing to do extra work just to help you for a tiny thing. When some people's projects did not turn out the way he wanted them to, he did a ton of extra work to make them better. He didn't have to do this, but he still wanted to help them. You know, born and raised in New Jersey and spent most of my middle school and high school days breaking stuff. <laughs> and then in college, I met a very talented artist. He showed me how to weld and I was hooked. And uh, I spent 18 years teaching middle school science and robotics and, and art, building things. Uh, I teach an industrial art class at Pacific Ridge. And uh, this is the first year at Pacific Ridge. I had to change the program. I'm doing a bunch of other 3D art along with the metalworking. And I was really worried I sort of downscaled the project, and I was worried the projects would just be sort of boring and cookie cutter. And Miles proved me wrong. He's an incredibly talented little artist. And you have to understand, all these students, the first time they ever use the welder, the torch, or metalwork, it's on their finished product. There's no time for them to practice. And so, uh, you know, some of them can be a little rough. But uh, Miles built a beautiful little metal robot, and uh, really sharing that with these students is, is a great reward, uh, as well as this is. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.
You know, I have people asking me, uh, you know, why would you run for the school board, join the rough and tumble of politics, and as Beth knows, everyone agrees with you all the time, right? Yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, that's best answered by my kindergartner. We were, uh, I was on the playground before school a few weeks ago, and it was me against him and, and uh, four other kindergartners were playing tetherball, and I let them almost win. And, uh, uh, but I was just looking at them and seeing how far they came in just the last six, seven months. Um, you know, they're, they're sponges and they're, they're blank slates. And the biggest people that have influence on them are the parents and the teachers. The, those are the, the two, the three uh, people that have the most influence on them. So it was critical to me that our school and, and all of our schools have uh, the best teachers that we can who are dedicated to uh, teaching the kids and, and seeing them grow out of vested interest in our kids just as much as we do as the parents. So uh, they're the biggest piece of the puzzle and uh, I'm glad that this church is uh, doing this for them so that you know, if they're on the fence of whether they want to continue serving the kids and, and being a teacher, that this will continue and give them a little extra gas to uh, carry on their, uh, their journey. So thank you so much. Um, 
working out the books. We do a lot of hands-on things, and that's important to me. Um, and I think it's also important for me that I try to build relationships with my kids because really they're people first, and then as people is more important to me than the physics. The physics is second. So thank you again very much. is social science teacher Stuart Pollock. <laughs> Stuart teaches government and economics as well as AP U.S. History, AP Macroeconomics, and AP U.S. Government and Politics. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Mr. Pollock, oh this is what some of your students say. Mr. Pollock always tries his best to make sure the projects are as fun as possible. We get to do a lot of open-ended projects where we can do things that interest us. Mr. Pollock loves teaching the subjects he teaches, and this is clear to see if you spend any time talking to him. He also does a very good job of being politically unbiased, which I greatly appreciate. He doesn't put up with students acting out. When a student decides to be obnoxious, he will deal with them quickly, which is great, because a lot of teachers don't. <laughs> and their classes become rather chaotic. As long as you have, a res have, as long as you have respect in his class, Mr. Pollock will make sure you have fun time whatever class you take, Mr. Pollock. Uh, thank you very much for uh, honoring us tonight. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I've always felt that as teachers we're very lucky to get to do what we do each day. Um, as you heard, I teach uh, U.S. history, government, and economics to uh, juniors and seniors. And one of my favorite things about that is that um, I get to talk about and hear what they think about what's going on in the country and the world today. And that's really exciting because many of them uh, become of voting age while well, I, I get to teach them. So that's, that's quite uh, special. Um, so for me, it's really the enthusiasm of the kids that uh, makes each day so enjoyable. And uh, so I'd like to thank Quincy and uh, the Nelson family for this honor tonight. Uh, Quincy is someone who would come to class every day uh, with some news item that he'd seen and, and he'd want to talk about it. And that always helped us uh, get class off to a good start. So I'd like to thank him for that. And uh, I'm just very privileged to work with great people at CCA. And, and I learn from them every day. And uh, I know that will continue for a long time. So thank you very much again. It's a privilege to teach in this community. Thank you. Thank you for this great honor. Thank you, Josh. 
and Seth and Darren for doing this for me. Um, I've been in our district for 24 years, and I also attended all the schools in our district. My oldest son graduated from the schools in the district, so I feel very connected to the school district and the community around here. Um, this year I have a unique situation in that I'm teaching an accelerated double block class, and I see my students, every single one of them, every single day. I stand out my door, I welcome these kids in, and I get to see the change in their countenance every single day. I see their ups, I see their downs, I see when they're leveled out, when they're stressed out, and it's a blessing to see them every day in this situation because I realize my goal is not necessarily there to teach math standards, Teaching derivatives or how to graph rational functions isn't the purpose that I'm there for. My purpose is to be present in these students' lives every single day and say, how are you doing today? If I see that they have tears in their eyes, my job is to take them out into the hall and talk to them what's going on in your life and let's take some time out to deal with it. And that's easy to do because that's the pleasurable part of my job and teaching math is secondary to that. So. I just want to say I love all your students and in my class they are a true blessing. So thank you again for this honor. Thank you Josh for being my escort tonight. And thank you all. Now I would like to ask Superintendent Robert Haley to say a few words. To respond more, I thought I had like 10 more seconds to think. Um, it's an honor to be the superintendent of San Diego Union High School District. I am in my first year. Um, and coming into the district, uh, met a lot of people. Uh, one of the questions that I asked everyone I met is, what are the strengths of the district? And pretty much consistently across the board, the first thing that everybody said was the students. That we have great students. And I think we've seen that here tonight. This is um, very special. And then people will say, well, yeah, the students are great, but, but we have great teachers. And I think we've seen that here tonight. Uh, we have some truly inspiring, wonderful teachers. And then they say, well, well wait, there's, there's one more thing. It's really our whole school culture. That's what's great. And I think that that's what we've seen tonight. And that, that culture shows the team that we have with community, with the church, with families, um, with health organizations. We all come together to make sure that our students get a great education. I heard a little bit about the test scores at the beginning, and, and that's, that's fine, uh, but our school district, and I'm sure the other school districts represented here, we're really committed to the future. Um, we want all of our children to have successful education, to get everything that they need, uh, we want them inspired, we want them engaged, and we want them prepared. One of the things that I was thinking about, kind of edgy jargon, we often say the educators will know it, well, yeah, we want them prepared for college and career. And I've really been thinking about that this year. We've had a lot going on in terms of wellness and, and, and how we approach uh, education. I'm glad that Homer was seven hours of sleep. That makes me proud. And, and I'm glad that we're saying, you know, liberty and justice for all the world. Keep doing it. Um, because we want, to, we want to prepare kids for life. It's not for a job and go to college. And, and seeing the people here tonight, seeing what I've heard, I think that that's pretty reflective of, of that's what we want to do. And I was a teacher before I was a principal, before I was a superintendent, so I'll never stop teaching. And I want to say to the young lady from La Casa Canyon High School, and all of you, if, if you're proud of who you are and what you're doing, never ever be afraid to share it. Ever. Speak up, okay? And with regards to the candy trading at Canyon Crest, we're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> Not sure I'm proud of that as they have the sleep homework. And then lastly, I just want to say um, another thing that I've been thinking about. I am fascinated by words and the power that words have. And thank you, we'll say it's a hyphenated word, uh, is a powerful thing to say to somebody. And certainly go out of your way to say thank you. But then I also heard another word tonight, and I've heard it lately and I've really been reflecting on it. And that's gratitude. Because I think gratitude takes it one step further. It's really that empathy, that connection you have for what that person 
has done for you. And I think I've seen a lot of gratitude tonight. And I'm grateful to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Haley. And before I forget, I want to invite all the teachers, all the Crystal Apple Award recipients, to gather right over here following the closing prayer for a photograph. Record this for history. So before, before we conclude this program this evening, we'll have one final crystal apple to present. In the year 2000, we decided to add to our event a special crystal apple award. These have often gone to recognize those in our other district positions that have gone above and beyond in their dedication to their jobs. These have included coaches, retiring superintendents, and principals, campus supervisors, and the honoring of late spouses. This year's winner of our special Crystal Apple Award is Lacosta Canyon High School American Sign Language teacher, Catherine Francois. Ms. Francois cares about her students on a personal level 
She can always tell if you're not feeling well and tells us we can talk to her if we need to. She also cares about our home life and our life outside of school. She came to listen to my friends talk one Sunday. After the school shooting in Florida, Ms. Francois talked to the class and made sure that we were okay and not too scared. She cares about her students enough to take time out of class to talk about life. During Thanksgiving, she put out papers and a box where students could write notes to other members of her classes. She then delivered them right before break. I loved having the opportunity to express my gratitude for other members of my class. I miss Tristan, talking to Tristan about how nice, funny, and brilliant Miss Francois is. Because it was cool how we could both, how we both did American Sign Language. I miss Tristan, and though Tristan would be honored to have his favorite teacher win. So an applause for
I was shocked. It put puzzle pieces together, but I couldn't believe how this kid had it come to me and said, I have this thing going on, please help me uh, accommodate me, you know, excuse these assignments or something, things that you would expect even adults to say. And you look at Tristan and I look at my other students who just go through such things, things that we don't think about. And they wear their armor and they go through the day and they smile and they giggle and they do all these things and I don't know, I just think I'm really lucky to get to break through that and see that and to then see the courage that Tristan has to just persevere and go forward. And for me, that's the thing that keeps me going. And when I have, it's May, teachers, we got this. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, I look at those kids and I look at all of my students and I persevere and I bring on that courage and I put on that brave face and get through the day too. And yeah, just love all you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Francois. Thank you to each one of the teachers here this evening. We're grateful for the influence for good that you are in the lives of our students and all students. I'm grateful for your attendance here this evening and for your efforts on a daily basis in the classroom. We will conclude our program this evening with a special musical number from our youth choir titled Glorious. Thank you.